Hello everyone, it's been a while since the last time we stylized a scene from scratch, so I wanted to do this tutorial series restylizing a scene that we've done before, but showing all the new tools that we have in order to make this happen much faster and in a much more efficient way. With that being said, let's get started. You might remember this scene from last year where we stylized and we made it look as if it would have this dreamy quality to it. We never finished it back then, so we'll take this opportunity to redo it from scratch and take it until the final look. So let's get started. So I just opened a scene here from Artella and I'm changing just the perspective here. And this is a rather big scene, so let me show you a little bit how big this is. I'm going to change here the atmosphere range, just uh, changing this a bit. 72. I'm going to put it to 500 so that we have a nice gradient. And as you can see, this is um, rather big. It has about 4 million polygons, I think. If we see here faces, yeah, about 4 million faces. And we're going to just treat it as is. So we're not going to make any optimization in this case. We're just, we're real time anyways. And this computer is strong enough to show everything on interactive frame rate, so I'm going to keep it this way. So as you can see as well, this is all referenced, which was previously not possible before. Previously, you had to import everything and stylize everything. Now it doesn't matter. I actually encourage you to work with references because then you will also keep your scenes very small in terms of size. So yeah, everything's fully supported on our reference workflow. So this scene was already prepared using a different version of MNPRX. So the first thing that I would do if this scene was touched with a previous version of MNPRX is to go here and right click on the material preset MPRE and then click on update shader effects materials. So this will automatically run over every shader effects material that can be found in the scene, and it's gonna update it to the latest version. Now, this is not very important nowadays, but since this scene was created over a year ago, we do need to update the materials in the scene so that we have the latest features. Now, updating the materials in the scene won't override any custom materials that you might have had. So if you look here into open shader effects, this is now the version 2.0, so it has been updated to the new uh, material. But the update shader effects materials will only update the shader effects materials that don't have this custom graph value as true. So if a material had this as true because you changed something within the shader effects graph, then you should set this to true so that updating the materials in the future doesn't delete any changes you have made, basically. And now you will also realize, in case you know about shader effects, that the MNPR Uber material here is referenced as well. So in case you want to make changes inside of it, which you get into by pressing this button, in case you make any changes here, you also need to make this group unique so that this won't be automatically updated with future versions of MNPRX. Some more cleaning that we need to do here is that there are some materials that are simply just showing black. And while this could be the case that uh, there's no texture, for example, assigned to it, once we check here, we're going to see that some of these materials have all the values to minus one, and basically they, they don't do anything anymore. Now, this is a shader effects bug that sometimes happens when the material can find the textures that are assigned to it and are saved in a corrupted manner. Now, we unfortunately can't change shader effects. That's up to Maya to change. However, we do have a way to fix this. And by this, we can start introducing the import export tool that is crucial for production. So in this case, I'm first going to import just the materials and the paint effects from a previous version that had all of these working flawlessly. So I'm gonna go here to import. I'm gonna paste the path that I already have here. 
go one down. And as you can see, we have two style files here. So whenever you're saving a scene nowadays, a style file gets saved that basically contains everything that your scene has in terms of the stylization within MNPRX. So I'm going to load up the light style, which was the one that was previously saved that didn't have this problem. So once I start importing this, this will automatically check if the materials are corrupted and fix them accordingly. Once we relink all the textures, this error should not happen anymore, but just keep in mind that this can happen with shader FX materials, but there are ways to fix it. We currently can't change the way shader FX works, but we're already working on our own custom material so that we don't have to deal with these bugs that we can't repair in the future. So now that the stylization has loaded, we can check that the materials that were black here, whenever we check the values, they do have values now and they're working correctly. They just can't find the path to the textures. We're gonna deal with this later on. Since we're still using the import export tool, I also want to import the style file for this project. So usually whenever you're working on a project, you have one main style file that you can load up in any kind of scene that you're working on for that project. You can also save that as a style file here within the style presets, but in this case, I don't have it saved, so I need to import it from here. So I go here and import Toti style here. And once that is imported, it's setting all the attributes in the configuration node, as you can see here. So now when I select the configuration node, we have all the the style files for this project, which is great. I'm also going to reduce a little bit the canvas roughness because this style file was saved in a previous version of MNPRX, so I need to adapt it a little bit. Now that we have that, I want to do one last import and is for the main characters. So the main characters have been stylized before. So I want to reuse this in production so that you only style them once and then you can port the stylization over to different scenes. And this is a bit more complex because we're dealing with namespace changes. Now the style was defined in the main rig file, which didn't have any namespace. So we need to add a namespace while we import this style. And we can do this with the stylization import export tool. So in here, we just select materials and paint effects. And then we say change namespaces upon importing from an empty namespace to Domo and Toti, which is found here. Domo and Toti is the namespace. So once we have that up, I'm going to import and navigate into where the style of the characters was saved, which in this case is characters Domo and Toti working, and I can select the style file and open it up. It's automatically going to import everything it finds there and put it here and changing the namespaces for you so that you have the style working. Now that we have imported everything, we can close the tool and we have the scene ready to work with. So as you can see, there is a mixture here of shader effects materials and normal Maya Lambert materials. Now, normal Maya Lambert materials are partially supported as well. The only problem with them is that they can't really support our direction. So as you can see, this guy has the MNPRX materials with some art direction and the, this character here has normal, in this case, Lambert materials. So as you can see, once we have an art directed MNPRX material behind, we see some ghosting artifacts. So to best work with MNPRX, the materials would need to be MNPRX materials. And this can be done in multiple ways. The easiest way and the most probably more intuitive one is to go into the material presets. And then here you can assign a preset and start adding a texture and so forth. But this can become quite tedious. This is great for when you're starting from scratch. But in this case, for example, we already have a Lambert material with a texture applied. So for this, we can use an inherit preset that will try to inherit all the textures and the attributes that were set in the Lambert material. So we select the t-shirt here, we double click on inherit, and as we can see here, now this is a shader effects material 
with the texture already on it. And we could do this with every material in the scene, but this would also take a lot of time and we don't really want to spend doing that if someone already took the time to do that with a Lambert material. So in these cases where the scene has already been prepared, we can use an automated tool for this. So we can open the MNPRX toolbox and hit auto convert Maya materials. Now what this will do is it's gonna iterate basically, it's gonna go over all the Maya materials in the scene and it's gonna try to automatically convert them to MNPRX materials with the right texture. So it's like running the inherit preset on every material in the scene. So let's try that out. This can take some time depending on your Maya scene, just keep that in mind. In case you want to see also what's happening, just open the script editor and then you're gonna see what is hap exactly happening and what is being processed behind the scenes. By the way, in case only some materials get corrupted, you can also import the stylization on selected objects. You just need to define that within the import export tool. So after I waited a bit, you can see here in the script editor that all the processing that has been done in order to convert all of these um, materials into shader effects materials. And as you can see now, all of them are black because the textures couldn't be found before. So as you can see, we have all the values here. We have even the texture, but it can find it because this scene was textured in another artist's computer and we have a very different setup. But this is not a problem because we can relink any textures as well. So I'm gonna click relink textures and I'm going to select here the entire folder of Toti. So this is basically gonna go through all the folders that you have and it's gonna try to find the exact texture based on its name. So I'm just gonna select this entire uh, folder where my entire project is pretty much and select this. And this is also gonna run in the background in the script editor, you have more information and it's gonna hook and bind the right texture to the material. And there we go. Now we have all the textures relinked and all of the materials in the scene are now shader effects materials, which is pretty cool in terms of speed improvements. In the previous tutorial that series that we did with this scene, we spent many minutes just trying to do this and only with a subset of all the objects in the scene. So this really speeds up the workflow. Now, something that is also very important is that once you relink the textures, all of them are going to be relative to your project path. So as long as everyone is working with a project path, all the textures should be found in the future as well. This is great for when you're working with people with many different setups and that have sometimes absolute paths on them. This keeps things also tidy up and organized. So with that being said, before we finish the tutorial, I would like to fix one last thing. And Lambert, for some reason by default, has a shading of 0 0.8, which in our case, we're also putting it here. However, MNPRX materials really benefit from a shading of 1.0. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna open up the bulk attribute tool. I'm gonna select all the materials in the scene so that automatically I have the attributes of all the selected objects. And I'm gonna go here down into shading and I'm gonna put one. So now all the materials in the scene will have a shading of one, which is exactly what we need to get started. As you can see, we have a shading here of one, we have a shading here of one and so forth. So that's it, the scene is completely ready to be lit and stylized and that's exactly what we're gonna do in the next videos. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe to be notified about future videos we do at Artineering. If you wanna support us, please consider being our patron. You are part of an incredible community to help guide the development of MNPRX and to answer any questions you have about stylized rendering. If you want to use this commercially, please also
buy your software, our plugin. You have Stella support from all of us and we're here to help you and to make your vision come to life. That's it guys. See you next time. And in the next videos, I think it's three more or two more in the series. We'll see when we're ready, but it's gonna look amazing. Thank you. See ya.